Since 1947, Martins has remained focused on quality products, customer service, and a sincere appreciation for employees. That philosophy has made Martins what it is today. We have a commitment to be a part of the community. Um, we're local, we employ local people, we sell local products, and it's, it's, it's about this community and how important we all are together. Welcome to Martins! With stores in South Bend, Mishawaka, Elkhart, Granger, Logansport, Napanee, Plymouth, Goshen, and Warsaw, Indiana, and Niles, St. Joe, and Stevensville, Michigan, as well as over 3,400 employees, Martins has enjoyed this kind of growth and success thanks to our number one asset, employees like you. You see, we believe that in the eyes of the customer, you are the company. It might as well be your name on the front of the store because it is you the customer will remember when they leave. Community involvement has always been part of the Martin's philosophy since Martin and Jane opened the very first store. They helped the folks in their neighborhood and we continue to do that in all the uh, communities that we serve. Whether it, it's donating a small gift card to an event or being the, you know, coordinating programs when we're selling shamrocks for muscular dystrophy and, and um, kind of being that connection point between the organizations, uh, the community, and our stores. At Martin's, we set the bar high when it comes to service expectations. We don't want our customers to have to settle for anything less. First and foremost, always acknowledge the customer and give them your undivided attention. A sincere greeting and a thank you for shopping with us are imperative. If a customer can't find an item, Take them to it instead of just telling them where it's located. And if a customer requests an item we don't carry, find your customer service manager or manager in charge so that request can be directed to the appropriate department manager. If we don't have an item that's on sale in the ad, offer the customer a comparable substitute or give them a rain check. It's not uncommon for customers to come in for one or two items and end up with their arms full. When you see this, get them a cart or basket. And if you see a customer with a full cart, get them an empty one and take their full cart to the front. If you're working as a cashier and have more than two or three customers in line, please call for extra assistance. When it comes to returns, we have a couple of guarantees. First, we offer a 200% guarantee on all perishable items and those items with the Martins label. We will refund the customer's money and give them a replacement, no questions asked. Our goal is to prove the quality of the product and get the item back into their household. We also have a 100% guarantee on all other items. People shop at Martin's Supermarkets because of our customer service. That's how we differentiate in the marketplace. And so it is just ever so important to really go the extra mile and make each and every customer that you help or assist or serve uh, happy on a daily basis. If a customer asks a question to which you don't know the answer, that's okay. There's a lot to learn and you won't always know all the answers. Just find someone who does know so they can help the customer. And if you should happen to receive a complaint from a customer, please call a manager to assist you. Remember, our customers' time is precious. We want them to get in and out as efficiently as possible while experiencing the best service imaginable. Your job is to make the customer your top priority, treating them as you would like to be treated. As an employee of Martin's, you're part of a very special organization. We believe in doing things a little different here to ensure customers have access to the highest quality products around. Practices such as buying from local vendors, offering fresh produce and meat, and maintaining a central bakery where homemade goodness is baked fresh every day are just a few examples of what sets us apart. Now that you're a part of the Martins team, there are some important things we want you to know about us. At Martins, we do have a dress code your HR coordinator will provide you with a uniform. Be sure to always wear your name tag and remember to smile. Both are an important part of your uniform. Your punctuality and attendance are very important to us and to our customers. Please arrive in uniform and ready to work at your scheduled time. 
If you're going to be late or absent, notify your store manager as soon as possible. Please clock out when you take a break or lunch. You will be paid for breaks, and we ask that you remain in the building during these breaks. You may, however, clock out and leave the building during your lunch. Please purchase your break or lunch items after you've clocked out. Take them to the customer service desk or designated cashier and be sure to keep your receipt. Martins is proud to offer a smoke-free environment to our employees and our customers. Smoking is prohibited in all areas of the store. If you're on your lunch break and you want to smoke, you must go to your car. Stealing is prohibited and will result in termination. If you're aware of another employee stealing, please report it. Please report any employee or customer accident or potential accident immediately. If a customer breaks something, assure them you will clean it up so they can continue shopping. If a customer is hurt, have a manager fill out a customer accident report. Do not apologize for the accident or say that we will take care of it, as this may be seen as admitting to being at fault. Remember, accidents happen. Your safety is our top priority. No product or amount of cash is worth you getting hurt. If you witness a customer attempting to shoplift, notify a manager or security officer immediately. Should a child become separated from the parent while shopping, please notify your manager immediately. Security will be alerted and all entrances to the building will be secured. No solicitation or distribution of literature of any kind by employees or customers is allowed on company property. Your first 90 days of employment is considered your orientation period. You will receive a review at 45 days, then another at six months and yearly after that. Whether this is a stepping stone to your future or you're interested in making your career here, you always will have access to the wage schedule. Just ask your store manager if you'd like to see where you are and what your top pay rate is for your position. We review our pay schedule annually to ensure that we're offering a competitive wage package to our employees. At Martins, we employ people from all walks of life. Martins employees enjoy the benefit of having a flexible schedule. If you're considering advancement, you'll be glad to know that opportunities are available to everyone. Remember, even vice presidents and store managers started out as service clerks. I've always enjoyed working for Martins. Uh, the people have been great. I've always been given an opportunity to grow with the company, and uh, there are a lot of opportunities at Martins. Just tell your department manager or store manager now where you hope to go and what you want to do. Then watch the bulletin board for new job opportunities that become available. They'll be posted through our job posting program. We're proud to offer our employees one of the best, most competitive benefits packages in the industry. We want to make sure you receive the best service possible when it comes to your benefits. So, please see your Human Resources Coordinator for more information regarding your specific benefits. You are eligible to enroll in Martin's 401k plan once you've been employed for six months and are 21 years old. Our plan includes a company match. Martin's benefits package includes paid time off. Vacation pay is based on the average number of hours worked. You'll be eligible for your first week of vacation after one year of employment and continue to earn additional paid vacations as your service continues. See your employee handbook for more details. Martins also offers paid time off for New Year's Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Part-time employees are paid for four hours and full-time employees are paid for eight hours. All Martin stores are closed on Christmas. In addition, you will also receive two additional personal days as paid days off. At Martin's, we know our greatest asset is you. That's why we believe in offering tuition reimbursement to encourage personal and professional growth. Full-time and part-time employees may be eligible for tuition reimbursement. We will reimburse 75% of tuition costs for up to two classes per semester with a grade of C or better. 
please see your employee handbook or human resources coordinator for more details. Tuition reimbursement can be used toward most business-related courses. For easy and convenient banking, Martins offers direct deposit to almost every financial institution. Sign up for direct deposit. Your HR coordinator will be happy to help you. You'll have the opportunity to sign up for a Martins Advantage card if you don't already have one. With this card, you'll be flagged as an employee in our loyalty program. As a Martins employee, you will receive exclusive employee savings and will save 10%. Communication is a two-way street. We will do our best to keep you informed, but we also ask that you make an effort to stay up to date on the latest news. The following are modes by which we'll communicate with you. Our employee newsletter, Food for Thought, is produced three times a year and mailed to your home. Please take the time to read through it when it's delivered. This newsletter contains important information regarding your benefits, company news and programs, as well as highlights some neat things our employees are doing. We also utilize bulletin boards to keep you up to date on current events, company news, job postings and more. Please be sure to check your bulletin board several times throughout the week. Top management luncheons are held monthly these luncheons provide the opportunity for management to sit down with employees in an informal setting to get thoughts and ideas. And most important is Martin's open door policy. Feel free to speak to your direct supervisor, HR coordinator, store manager or assistant manager with any questions, ideas, suggestions or concerns. At Martin's we're a family and our people genuinely care about each other. They care about the customers we serve, we're there for them, they're there for us. Once again, we welcome you to the Martins team. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, 
you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight. Act with aggression. Improvise weapons. Disarm him. And commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Welcome to Globally Harmonized Systems and Safety Data Sheets, also known as GHS and SDS. Let's first take a look at why we need GHS. First, it is critical for workers to understand how to safely handle all chemicals that workers come into contact with on a daily basis. Second, workers need to know how hazardous chemicals are classified and the methods used to communicate those hazards. What GHS does GHS ensures that handling instructions for all products are clear and easily understood worldwide. Keeping workers safe and well is why we have hazard communication procedures in the workplace today. There are three types of hazards we should be aware of when working with hazardous chemicals, physical, health, and environmental. Physical hazards have 16 categories. One example of a physical hazard would be explosives. Health hazards have 10 categories, which includes acute toxicity. Environmental hazards have two categories, which are acute and chronic aquatic toxicity. It is important to know that chemicals that belong to these three hazard types can be very dangerous. Let's take a look at the communication methods. There are two types of communication methods we must follow and refer to when working with hazardous chemicals, labels, and safety data sheets. Labels. GHS has made understanding container labels simple by standardizing three key components, symbols, signal words, and hazard statements. These label components will be on all labels, no matter where the chemical originates from. Symbols. The first key components to labels are symbols. 
The symbol component located on the label helps identify which type of hazard is present in the container. The pictogram will be a white diamond with a red border. Inside the border will be a picture outlined in black. There could be up to nine symbols on any individual label. The second component to labels are signal words. Signal words are used to indicate a hazard's relative level of severity. There are two signal words, danger, which is used for more severe chemicals, and warning, which is used for less severe chemicals. The third key component to labels is the hazard statement. Hazard statements are standard phrases used to describe the nature and degree of each hazard based on class and category. Precautionary statements. Another item that is required to be on labels are precautionary statements. Precautionary statements are statements that cover information regarding prevention, response, storage, disposal, product identifier, the must match the SDS, and supplier information. Our next method of communication when working with chemicals are safety data sheets, or SDS. Safety data sheets go into detail about each individual chemical hazard and how to protect yourself when you come in contact with them. You should always consult the safety data sheet for any hazardous chemical you come into contact with. The GHS safety data sheets are divided into the following 16 categories. Product identifier, GHS classification, chemical identity, first aid procedures, firefighting measures, accidental release, handling chemicals safely, safe chemical exposure, chemical and physical properties, stability and reactivity, health effects, environmental impact, proper disposal, transferring chemicals, safety, health and environmental regulations, and all other information. It is important that all workers who come into contact with hazardous chemicals are following the GHS safety measures. Know where the SDS is kept. Comply with each chemical's SDS information. Use only properly labeled containers containing chemicals. Know what protocol to follow in an emergency. Know where eyewash and emergency stations are located. Report spills, leaks, and accidents and ask a supervisor when you're unsure of how to handle a chemical. This concludes our review of GHS and SDS. If you have any questions regarding this information, please see your supervisor or your human resources coordinator. Direct contact with blood or other bodily fluids can put you at risk for infection from blood-borne pathogens. Blood-borne pathogens are disease-causing microorganisms, viruses, and bacteria present in the blood or body fluids that are transmitted through the bloodstream. The most common examples are hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. As a new employee at Martin's Supermarkets, you could face exposure to these risks while carrying out your routine duties. This training video is designed to give you an understanding of blood-borne pathogens and their transmission so you can stay safe and healthy on the job. In order for these diseases to be transmitted, infected blood or body fluid must enter your bloodstream. There are three ways this can happen. Through the mucous membranes of the nose, mouth, or eyes through a cut or abrasion on the skin. As the result of a wound caused by a contaminated object such as broken glass. Although these diseases cannot be transmitted through everyday casual contact, you may occasionally come in contact with someone's blood or body fluid. For example, saliva that may contain blood. It is Martin Supermarket's policy not to require employees to perform first aid or CPR. Martin's policy does require 
that if the employee chooses to perform first aid or CPR, that universal precautions be used at all times. We will explain universal precautions in just a moment. If you choose to give first aid to an accident victim, you may come in contact with human blood or body fluids. You can also be exposed to saliva containing blood when performing CPR or mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Cleaning an area where potentially contaminated blood is present may put you at risk for exposure. How can you protect yourself? There are three ways. Knowledge, personal protective equipment, and good housekeeping. Knowledge is a vital part of your protection. If you don't come in contact with blood or bodily fluids, you can't be exposed to illness. Any blood or bodily fluid you encounter in the course of doing your job should be viewed as potentially hazardous. It is Martin's Supermarket's policy that universal precautions be used should any employee be involved in the cleanup or disposal of any potentially hazardous contaminated surface or item. This means you should assume all blood and body fluids are infectious. Never pick up a contaminated object, whether you have gloves on or not. Always use a broom and dustpan to clean up the area. The second area, personal protective equipment, is crucial when you come in contact with blood or body fluids. When providing first aid, retrieve the first aid kit and if the person is able, allow them to perform their own first aid. If you provide first aid or clean up an accident where blood or other body fluids could be involved, always put on latex gloves. Latex gloves will protect your hands and skin from direct contact with blood. This will prevent contaminants from entering the bloodstream through cuts or other openings in the skin. When performing CPR, always use a pocket mask or a CPR shield. This prevents any tainted blood or body fluids from getting on your skin or in your mucous membranes. All protective equipment should be removed immediately following the injury or cleanup response and discarded. When removing gloves, pull them inside out to contain the contaminants. The third area that can help you avoid exposure to contaminants is housekeeping. Contaminated surfaces or items can be decontaminated by cleaning in a solution containing at least one part bleach to ten parts water. Your personal hygiene is also an important part of protecting yourself. If you've been exposed to blood or any other body fluid, make sure that you thoroughly wash your hands and any other exposed skin. Use an antiseptic soap and vigorously scrub all areas. It's the abrasive action of the scrubbing that removes contaminants from the skin. Despite your best efforts, there is always a possibility of coming into contact with blood or blood-tainted body fluids during an emergency or cleanup situation. If you feel you have been contaminated, please notify your manager or supervisor. Martins is required by OSHA to provide post-exposure evaluation and follow-up. This may include testing and medical consulting for you if you are exposed. All post-exposure evaluation and medical records are confidential and are kept separate from an employee's personnel files. Although the risk from blood-borne pathogens is extremely small, it's important that you take the proper steps to protect yourself. Treat all body fluids as potentially infectious. Use the proper personal protective equipment. And always practice good housekeeping and personal hygiene. It's easy to get involved in the daily routines of your job and forget about the risks involved in performing some basic tasks. Know what to do before a potential exposure situation occurs. And if it does, take the proper precautions to prevent your exposure to any potential blood transmitted disease. Modern machinery can contain many hazards to workers. For example, a typical industrial machine may contain things like hot fluids, moving presses, blades, propellers, electrical heaters, conveyor belts with pinch points, 
moving chains, ultraviolet light, or other potential hazards. The purpose of the lockout tagout program is to prevent injury or even death as a result of the unexpected startup or energizing of equipment or machines. Lockout tagout is a safety procedure designed to ensure that dangerous machines are properly shut off and not started up again prior to the completion of maintenance or servicing work. It requires that a lock or tag be placed on a machine before the machine is serviced or cleaned. Lockout devices are attached in a manner that will hold the device in a safe or off position. Tags are essentially warning devices and do not provide the physical restraint of a lock. Tags are attached to the machine, or as in this case, a breaker box, in a manner that would hold the device in a safe or off position as if it was a lock. At Martin Supermarkets, authorized employees, usually a manager or a supervisor, are the only persons who may lock out or tag out a machine. Authorized employees are those who know the machine and where its power source is. If you see a lockout tag on a machine, don't use it and never remove a lockout tag on a machine. Lockout tags are placed on equipment for a purpose. It's not to be removed except by the manager or supervisor who applied it. And the lock or tag is never to be bypassed, ignored, or otherwise defeated. An affected employee is someone who uses a particular piece of equipment or machinery while performing their job duties. Affected employees may not perform the lockout tagout procedure. However, affected employees must know the standard and importance of the procedure. If a machine has an electrical plug that is within your control, you are not required to lock out or tag out the machine. However, you must be in complete control of the unplugged unit. That means that no one beside you has access to the machine's electrical plug while you are performing cleaning or maintenance duties. And remember, always use proper safety procedures when working with any electrical device. With key operated machines, such as pallet jacks, floor buffers, and forklifts, the key itself is the lockout device. When not in use, removal of the key prevents unexpected startup of the machine. The key is always kept in the manager's office when the device is not in use. The repair of a forklift would fall under standard lockout tagout procedures if a condition exists that could jeopardize safe operation of the forklift. As with other devices, only an authorized employee, a manager or a supervisor, may lock out or tag out the machine. And remember, you must be 18 years of age or older and properly trained to operate a forklift. Never attempt to operate a forklift truck unless you have been trained and authorized to do so. No one under the age of 18 may operate a baler or compactor or place cardboard or trash in them. Jams are frequent occurrences in baling and compacting operations. Never reach into a baler or compactor unless it has been de-energized. And always use lockout tagout procedures before you perform maintenance, inspections, or clear jams in a baler or compactor. We want you to be safe and productive while doing your job. That's why it's important to follow the safe work practices designed for your work area and job tasks. And remember, whatever your job, safety always comes first at Martin's.